Hey guys, so I was requested to do a specific example of this um, precise defi definition of a limit and a specific epsilon using 1 over x. So just to remind you the exercise here, so I give you an f of x, a c, and an epsilon. So you got to find the limit and then the delta that fulfills the definition of the limit. And here is the precise definition of the limit. I've done another example video where I did a bunch of these, but this is a specific one that was requested. So here's the example that I'm going to do. I'm going to have f of x equals 1 over x. My c is going to equal 1, and my epsilon will be um, 0.01. So first things first. So we've got to find our limit as x approaches c. So remember, that comes from the precise definition of the limit. So I'm using this part right here. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over x. Well, in this case, I can just actually plug that in. This will be 1 over 1, which just equals 1. So this is my L. OK, so now. Again, using the precise definition of the limit, I'm going to be taking this part right here, my absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. I'm going to plug all of those values in. So I've got my f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So plugging in my stuff, this is going to be 1 over x minus 1 is less than uh, 0.01. And so now I can go ahead and break up this inequality like this. And now I got to start solving for x. So I add 1 to all sides. So this is going to be 0 0.99. This is going to be 1.01. .01. And so now it's like, how do you, what, what do you do next? So here you have to remember a property of inequalities. So there is like this reciprocal property that will look like this. So I can take the reciprocal of everything. So that'd be 1 over 0.99. So this would be now x over 1. And then this will be 1 over 1.01. .01. But notice what I had to do. So I had to flip the inequality. So this is one of the, the properties that sometimes people forget. So now I can go ahead and, and just sort all this out. So this becomes, um, I, I want to put this in order. So I'm going to have this part go first. So 1 divided by 1.01. .01. So I'm going to round, but this comes out to 0.99. We'll just call it 0.99. And then the next part is x. And then 1 divided by 0.99 is 1.010101. So it just so happens like the, in this particular instance, it just so happens that like we, we basically just like reversed all of this. So when you do the math to figure this out, like this, this could happen, which it did. So, okay, cool. So now I'm going to clear some space and I'm just going to hold on to this part here. So now let's go chasing after our delta. So again, I'm using the precise definition of the limit. So I'm kind of leveraging this part right here. So I've got my x minus c is less than delta. So if I plug in what I know, this is going to be x minus 1 is less than delta. And so then I can break this up as shown. And so now I just send set the ends um, equal, right? So this part is going to equal, oops, sorry, I, I'm jumping ahead here, aren't I? I need to solve for x first, my bad. Um, so let me add the 1 to all sides. So I get 1 minus delta is less than x, and then 1 plus delta. Okay, so now I can go end to end here. So take this and set it equal to this, and then take this and set it equal to this. So if I take 1 minus delta and set it equal to 0.99, this will come out to 0 0.01. And then if I take 1 plus delta and e set it equal to 1.01, .01, I get once again that this is actually going to equal 0.01. So the delta in this case, you know, it's either one. So there's your specific delta in this case. So hopefully that was helpful. Of course, if you guys have more questions, you can always send them my way. If I have time, I will make a video. Thanks for asking, guys, and I'll talk to you next time.